So imagine this, right? You're driving down the motorway when you see a bright light. Universally, three things are likely to occur. An out-of-body experience, a sense of peace and euphoria, and your life flashing before your eyes. If you eventually return to your body and wake up, congrats. You have now had a near-death experience. What does science have to say about what happens to the brain in between being alive and dead? Interestingly, near-death experiences are a grey area in the field of science, specifically because it has baffled the large majority of people in the field. With so much research going into a definitive answer, it is surprising that nobody truly knows how and why this phenomenon occurs. In 2008, a large-scale study was conducted to investigate the awareness of participants during resuscitation, specifically patients who were at risk of suffering from cardiac arrest. This study had taken place across 15 hospitals in the UK, US, and Austria, involving 2,060 patients. The objective was to examine just what happened to patients during cardiac arrest and whether they could accurately recall events that had occurred around them whilst being resuscitated, to identify a possible link between auditory and visual stimuli. The objective was also to observe how this affected their near-death experience if they had one. Of those who participated, only one patient was in good enough condition to be interviewed about what they had seen. This participant, a 57-year-old man, described experiencing a euphoria and claimed to have heard an automated voice saying, shock the patient. Despite being unconscious during the procedure, the patient was also able to confirm the appearances of the nurse and the doctor who had resuscitated him, describing the latter as a bald and quite a chunky fella who wore blue scrubs and a blue hat. To confirm his experience, medical records showed the use of defibrillators during his resuscitation, confirming that what he had heard was in fact real. The patient also claimed that he had an out-of-body experience, floating just below the ceiling looking down on the events occurring below him, recalling, according to the investigators, enough information for the patient to be out of body for three minutes. However, what's peculiar about this case is that this patient would have been brain dead during the time that he had claimed to have had his near-death experience. So how was this patient able to see the things he saw without a supernatural explanation? Although no definitive proof has been found using human subjects, research by the University of Michigan found that when rats had been put under anesthesia and their hearts were temporarily stopped, the rats' brains flatlined within 30 seconds, which would accurately simulate what would happen in a human subject. However, something strange occurred. Just before it flatlined, researchers found that there was a spike inactivity in their brain, indicating that several regions of the brains were potentially active and communicating with each other just before the brain lost complete function. If the brain was aware that the body was losing oxygen, it may send a distress signal, sending hundreds or thousands of signals to different areas of the brain in order to get as much information about the situation as possible. However, this only explains how the patient had the near-death experience to begin with. What explains everything else the patient experienced, including the out-of-body experience itself? In a study questioning whether there was a correlation between the occurrences of near-death experiences and the occurrences of sleep paralysis, patients who had near-death experiences were asked questions like, just before falling asleep or just after awakening, have you ever seen things, objects, or people that others cannot see? And have you ever awakened and found that you were unable to move or felt paralyzed? The researchers found that individuals who had a near-death experience were far more likely to say yes to the questions, indicating that the same process that occurs in sleep paralysis patients could occur in near-death experience patients. However, that isn't the only explanation for what causes out-of-body experiences. The use of the drug ketamine has been seen to have the exact same effect on individuals that a near-death experience has, including an out-of-body experience, as well as a sense of belonging and peace. Ketamine's influence on the brain has shown that it reduces the influence of glutamate, which is a neurotransmitter that assists nerve cells when communicating. Therefore, by suppressing it, the individual will become much calmer. 
that is, if this same activity is occurring in the brain during a near-death experience. And this might explain why individuals feel much calmer and at peace. As well as this, as a result of glutamate being suppressed in certain regions of the brain, this could inhibit sensations of illusory hallucinations and the feeling of leaving one's body. So the effects of ketamine on the brain may be the key in what causes individuals to experience an out-of-body experience. And lastly, the most accepted theory behind what causes an out-of-body experience is to do with the disruption of specific areas of the brain, like the temporoparietal junction, which is an integral part of processing visual, auditory, and sensory information, as well as having an important role in our own self-processing of the world, in particular of visual and spatial tasks. If this area of the brain is stimulated or disrupted, in this case due to immense amounts of stress, self-processing may also be disrupted, causing the individual's awareness of their own space to be compromised, causing them to visually hallucinate themselves elsewhere, resulting in an out-of-body experience. Although this explains what causes near-death experiences, how are individuals able to have these experiences despite the brain shutting down? Well, this may be due to tachypsychia, which is a neurological condition which alters memories, causing them to feel longer than they actually were. It can normally be triggered due to immense amounts of stress, which cardiac arrest would cause, explaining why the patients believed they had an out-of-body experience, which felt longer than it actually was. However, how does science explain individuals who claim to have seen their life flash before their eyes? Well, a study published by Penfield and Jaspers showed that when an electrical impulse stimulated the lateral temporal cortex, it caused patients to have a temporary memory flashback. In this case, as shown by the research conducted by the University of Michigan, before the brain shuts down it may want to understand the situation more, resulting in the brain communicating heavily with memory, which is located in the temporal cortex. However, by doing this it may stimulate the temporal cortex in such a way that it invokes memory flashbacks. On the contrary, the visions these individuals believed they saw may be nothing more than false memories being implanted into their head by other people or the brain itself, making them believe they saw, for example, their family members during a near-death experience, when in fact their memories were being manipulated. You might think that this is quite far-fetched. However, it has been shown that individuals recall events that didn't actually happen. In an interesting study conducted by Lickrell and Loftus, psychologists sat down with individuals who had at some point in their lives visited a Disney attraction. All the participants were given a printed ad and were asked questions about it. However, unbeknownst to them, they were being subjected to false information, including a picture of Bugs Bunny within the advertising, as well as a cardboard cutout of Bugs Bunny in the room with them. And when asked whether they saw Bugs Bunny on their visit, one third of the participants replied, yeah, I remember seeing him. Which is strange because not only was Bugs Bunny not around when they went to the park, he would have never been at the park, period. Because Bugs Bunny is owned by Warner Bros. This shows that our memories can be manipulated, and could suggest that individuals who have had a near-death experience could suffer from the same delusions, believing they saw something that in reality, they didn't. However, the last thing that individuals experience before waking up is a bright light, which would be caused by a grey out. A grey out is caused by a lack of blood to the head, which would occur in patients whose hearts had stopped pumping like cardiac arrest victims, or in individuals who had experienced extreme shock. This explains what occurs during a near-death experience. It seems like most scientists are trying to use Occam's razor to explain near-death experiences, which suggests that the simplest answer is most likely the correct one. However, due to the complexity of what occurs during a near-death experience, it is clear that one explanation will not explain everything that an individual goes through. <laughs> 